whether it's the filling in the pie, whether it's the pages in the book, it's the inside that makes the difference. And we forget that often as human beings. We tend to look at people's outsides and we tend to move into this place called judgment. And we have opinions. I, I was putting a little lipstick on to um, be as bright and shiny for you as I could in the ladies' room earlier, and I heard, and I couldn't see these people, so if you're in this room and I'm talking about you, forgive me in advance, because I didn't see you, I don't know who you are. But they were talking about a woman who had so much stuff with her that she looked like a bag lady, even though they knew she wasn't. Now, they didn't say anything beyond that, but can you hear an implied judgment in that statement? And as I said, this is not to make those two women wrong, whom I really have no idea who they were, it's simply to say that we look at the outsides of people and we tend to have an opinion long before we know anything about the insides of people. Now, when David called me, he said that my topic was healing. And Trisha's title, Trisha's title was Healing Through the Heart. And Trish's knows about heart math. I don't know anything about heart math, so I can't possibly give you Trish's talk. But what I can tell you is that the basis of all healing is to see it rightly. And seeing it rightly is not about looking at our exteriors. You can look at me and you could say, oh my God, I don't like those boots. So why would she wear those boots? Or, you know, she's too old for leggings. Or, <laughs> and, and all of those things may be accurate observations, but they have nothing to do with what's inside of me. And so when we look at the outsides of people, we frequently are making errors in judgment. Now, as we look at the outsides of people, it's easy to look at someone and decide, A, they're sick, B, they're dying, they are never going to get well, they are mentally ill, they are psychologically ill. Do you see the places that we can go? in order to create the world that I would like to live in, I'm guessing that you would like to live in, it becomes our work. And I choose that word on purpose because it is work. We have a lifetime of preconceived judgments about the exterior of people. We learned them from our parents. We learned that people who were tall or short or wide or narrow were to be responded to in a particular way. We learned that healthy looked like me. Excuse me, Jeff, it doesn't look like you. So we make up our minds and we decree illness in places that there isn't any. If I were to talk individually one-on-one -on -one with you and um, at some point in time I may actually ask you to talk to me, I do do that even though you're in the seat and I'm up here. <coughs> Excuse me. But if I were going to ask you how many of you are in pain right this very moment 
My guess is that if each of us were being 100% and honest, our answer would be yes. Now, some of us may have physical pain. Could be uh, muscle pain because you shoveled your driveway before you came. Could be physical pain because you have a bit of arthritis. Maybe your back no longer, your neck no longer hurts, but maybe you have some kind of physical pain and you're used to living with that and you're here. Some of us may have mental pain. Mental pain frequently comes from experiences in our past. Mental pain comes from Wounds we may have suffered as children. Perhaps we had abusive parents. Perhaps we had abusive teachers. Perhaps we've been in abusive relationships. And we still carry the pain of that relationship with us. We carry the pain of the experience from our childhood with us. And we don't really go anywhere without it. It's part of who we are, we're used to it, and we may carry ourselves in a particular way because of that pain, but the pain has been part of us for so long that we can't imagine not having that pain. Some of us have psychic pain. Psychic pain, emotional pain are pretty close together but the psychic pain frequently we cause ourselves. We cause it because I heard Robert tell someone that Doris is really not a very good speaker. And because of that, my self is damaged. My self feels less than. And that could have happened back when I was 25 years old. And again, I may still be carrying that with me. So when we talk about healing, we're talking about three different kinds of healing. And there could be variations of those kinds of healing, but categorically there are three kinds of healing. And choosing to see whatever kind of pain you're in rightly is a very difficult thing to do. You know, I, I would like it to be as quick as I'm going to play this bowl and move it around and you're going to be healed forever. My ordination didn't come with that kind of a magic wand. I can't do that. But I do know the ways that if you're willing to work, that it can go away. And the truth is, sometimes it's absolutely as quick as you just saw it. And sometimes it's the work of the rest of your life. And neither one of those is wrong. Neither one of those is the right way to heal. There are many kinds of vibrational, energetic healing. There's oneness blessings, and there's healing touch, and there's Reiki, and all of those things are, have very significant um, causations in the world. They make a difference. But our work, Doris's work on a daily basis, is to find the places where I still experience pain and then to discover what it is in me that's holding on to that pain. Now, I know that if I walked around and said, do you like being in pain? You would say, are you out of your mind? No. And yet, we're so habituated to that pain that the idea of letting go of that pain is almost impossible for us to imagine. And I can tell you that the very first requirement for letting go of pain is the intention to see it rightly. Can you imagine seeing yourself 
without your particular kind of pain. If you can't see that, if you can't imagine it, if you can't hold it in your mind, it won't happen. When Unity talks about thoughts held in mind produce after their kind, they aren't just teaching you that you can manifest whatever you want in this world. Sure, that's possible. But as we change our thoughts, our life changes. We change our thoughts by changing our intentions. So can you imagine? Can you see yourself free from your particular experience of pain? You either can or you can't. Some of us like the drama of, I'm in pain. I hate to say it, but I've met some of those people. Some of us are not proud of our pain. We're very stoic. We bear it bravely, like a warrior. But it's still habituated. So can you see it rightly? Are you willing to change your perception? And that's an important word. In unity, we like the word transformation. Yes, I'm going to transform my life. Now let's use the word change. <laughs> what are you willing to change in your life? And since we're here on a Sunday when there are not quite so many people because they weren't as brave as you were, I, I, I'm going to give you a little bit of a challenge. And this challenge represents my observation when I'm sitting in this area. Sometimes I sit over there, sometimes I sit over there. About some of you in this congregation. I see you in the same seats, in the same place, the same number of seats back on the same aisle every time I come here. Transformation. God, please transform me, but I'm not leaving this seat. <laughs> just, just a small observation. So... Seeing how adventuresome you, be, you are, will you please stand up? If you're in the middle, would you go sit over there? If you're over there, would you please come to the middle? Right now, shoo, come on. <laughs> oh, sure, there's always an exception. <laughs> are much more gracious about this than I expected you to be. Thank you. So how does the world look from where you are? You don't normally see me from over there. You don't normally see David from over there. You guys don't normally see from over there. Martha, on the other hand, always sees from that spot, but it's okay. <laughs> So do you see that that's a very simple little exercise? And yet, do you notice the part of you that was resistant to doing it? <laughs> the part of you that went, I don't like to sit over there. I always sit over here. <laughs> so using that tiny little example, imagine your work for the rest of your lives in changing the things in your life that cause you pain. Imagine what a challenge it is for you to choose to see your life differently than you've seen it before. 
One of the little cliches we say in Unity is that if you keep doing the things the way you've always done them, you're going to get what you've always gotten, right? And I love cliches because almost every single one of them are true 100% of the time. So in order to create healing in our life, to go back to Eric Butterworth, we must see it rightly. Because right seeing is the passport. It's the entree point to from illusion to the heaven of accomplishment. What do you want to accomplish in your life? Is it mental healing, psychological healing, or physical healing? Now I'm going to pick on the physical healing part for a while. I have a dear friend from Cincinnati. I was in Cincinnati for 15 years. And I have never known anyone as addicted to sugar in my life as my friend. Not only does she drink regular soda nonstop, a normal cup of coffee, she puts five teaspoons of sugar into that coffee. Now, we're not here to talk about what my friend weighs but we are here to talk about the fact that she has destroyed her liver. Do you see there is often a physical cause for the experience we have in our physical body? We chose to come into this life as physical human beings. And there are ramifications to all of our choices. Some of them are immediate. If I touch a hot stove, I will burn my finger. Some of them take longer. If I spend my life taking every form of sugar that I can possibly get a hold of and putting it into my body, there will be a consequence. On a mental level, what we put into our minds affects them. Do we live in fear? What creates an experience of fear in our life? Do we find ourselves upset frequently? Again, what is the stimulus that we put into our mind? Are we willing to change, to have a different life experience? You see, in unity, it's important to us that you know who you really are. Every single Sunday now, for the past several years since I've been back and part of this congregation. When I'm in this congregation, I hear you say the prayer for protection in a particular way. The light of God surrounds me. I am the light of God. So if you are the light of God, you are the light of God 24-7. You are the light of God in every situation. You are the light of God at all times, in all ways. If I say, the love of God enfolds me, Twenty-four seven, even driving on twenty-five, <laughs> even trying to find a place to park in the grocery store. Are you the love of God? See, we have to answer those questions individually. 
And it's not enough to answer them on Sunday morning. It's who you are on Tuesday afternoon. It's who you are at work that makes a difference. The presence of God watches over me. Every person you see, you see with God's eyes. God doesn't have another set of eyes, just yours. And are you seeing as God sees? Are you seeing yourself as God sees yourself? A lot of our opportunity to heal, physically, mentally, or spiritually, is tied to our own self-perception. The energy of God is your energy. The energy of God can deal with any situation. What calls forth the energy of God in you? Maybe it's the tones of singing bowls. Maybe it's the beauty of music. Maybe it's art. Maybe it's being in the mountains and seeing the physical beauty. What calls forth that energy in you? If you know who you are, those places that need healing attention, and all of us have them, every single one of us have them, the question becomes, do we notice them and are we willing to focus our attention on our work to do? Most of you are not called to be ministers. You don't have to stand up here and say, look, this is the place where I need healing attention. But we have to be willing to look at it. We have to be willing to transform it. We have to be willing to change it. And it can be as simple as changing places where you sit. And it can be much more complicated. I am not here for a half a second to tell you that this is easy, simplistic, but it is our work. And you know what I know about you? You signed up for this work. You know how I know? You're here. You said, I'd like to be born, I'd like to be alive in 2019, I'd love to live in this complicated, chaotic world because I'm here to help change and transform it. The good news, not any one of us has to do all that work by ourselves. The hard news is the people we interact with every single day <laughs> Those are the people that we have to be, the light, the love, the presence, the healing power of God. The peskiest person you know, that's who you have to be God for. 